nice to have a full house. I like that. I like that. Uh, first of all, do me a favor. Any applause you feel like giving, hold it until I'm done, because otherwise I lose my train of thought and it just totally derails. Uh, stuff I'm going to read is out of last year's two chapbooks. Uh, Poems Against Cancer 2015, which is a fundraiser for St. Baldrick's. And a uh, thing I did based on poems for the Lexington Poetry Month called Hitchhikers in Mississippi 1936. And I do have copies of those if anybody's interested. The Sounds of Water, Beaver Dam Lake, August 1956. I climbed down from the dock the way a new colt stands up. Somehow, I settle in the boat, rocking its green wood without turning a turtle, without a sudden swim. I'm eight next week. My hand trails in the water, and the sound of the lake mixes. It's part and parcel with oars, outboards, reels singing, fish leaping, bright laughter. South China Sea, September 1968. I step out on the catwalk, sea-legged and confident, settling on the radar platform, setting tools on its gray paint, I look across the flight deck to the chaplain and the body. I'm just turned 20. Their hands are anointed red, and the sound of the sea is dim beneath the throb of rotor blades, gunfire from the beach, and the whisper of absolution. It's called peekaboo. It's never so dark, so bare of light, that I can't see you. So street loud, I can't hear your breath. Never so rank with the world that I miss the wanting on your tongue. Senseless with love for you, I still have all my senses. There are eyes in my palms, guiding my fingers. I close them just before I touch you. I largely became a poet because of Carl Sandburg. Uh, back in 62 as a freshman in high school, just when his Honey and Salt came out, I started reading poetry, and his was the first I read. And uh, he's influenced me ever since. Uh, and this is, uh, if nothing else, at least somewhat in the style of some of Sandburg's longer work. Vision's experience. I have seen love in a tiny room where two people took each other for comfort. Certainly. And lying on the tired mattress and thinning sheets, they took each other to hold off loneliness until dawn. The scientists studying love, imagining this region of the brain and then that, charting pressures and responses in veins and glands, discourses on how love is this chemical, not that the spark leaping across this synapse to race across this ganglia. And when she lies beside her partner at the end of their day, no. the images are put away in a corner of the room. No, Lest distracted, she swapped them down like the mosquitoes looking to drain blood from love that they are. I have seen in black and white two people dancing under a street lamp. And I have seen in all the colors of the hours how after death came to take one home, they continued to dance, to whisper across the space of their yearning lips, and sing with arms wide for the embrace nothing could shatter. Can you not say words of love so that they echo down the hallways of time like self-absorbed revelers bent on keeping you awake? Of course. And the sound their echoes make are the unborn heartbeats of what might have been, if only. I have seen you. When she set fire to your life and then pissed on the flames, why did you stay in the burning building? And I have to ask you, when he tried to hang you from the porch rail, why did you keep climbing the stairs to the noose of his love? Fair linen. I want to gently slip my finger between your throat and the hem of that scarf, between the cool threads 
and longed for warmth the view as real flesh. Let me search again for faith, become the willing supplicant prostrate at the altar bar. Set aside the linen veil so I may take the chalice proffered to my wanting lips. One of the, the great things about the internet is running across things that inspire poems, whether you really want to write them or not. Uh, I'm a combat vet, and I ran across a video of uh, the funeral for a aircraft gunner back in uh, the Second World War. Uh, I had mixed emotions about that. Burying the TBF gunner, 5 November 1944. A 40 millimeter meter round exploded above us. I don't know how Denzek and I weren't hit. You can see where the flak tore into the wings on either side of us and all the way back to the elevators and rudder. The folks of Grumman built her rugged. Even with all the damage, she flew right and brought us home. Landing was as routine as any carrier trap can be. It's a shame she'll never fly again. And it's a shame about Lois. I'm surprised the corpsman found his dog tags and enough to fingerprint. He was a 4-0 sailor, as good as they get, and he cared about the young guys, the kids. They're pushing him and her over the fantail now. See her flip? All those holes and she still takes her time sinking. It's a fitting burial for a sailor. The water below us will keep him safer than the air ever could. This is called Take a Photograph. You can take a photograph of your parents' anniversary or the dog that followed you. A woman you knew loved you absolutely, positively forever, who left without a final kiss. You can take a photograph and hang it in a silver frame or set it on an old desk dresser. Keep it in a drawer where no one else can look at you except your midnight tears. You can take a photograph, then watch the sunsets fade it. The dust of autumns cover it. And when it's gone its way so no one else will remember, you will still see it everywhere. Okay, Hitchhikers in Mississippi, 1936, which is the title of one of the chapbooks, is based on a WPA photograph taken back in 1936 by Walker Evans. A black and white picture of a color standing very small in the middle of a long, long dirt road somewhere in Mississippi. The trees of forgotten summer have drawn up slim and dark against the morning's gray cold like the man standing by the woman. The canvas bag at their feet shows black beneath the dust. It holds everything but the clothes they've worn since the day before yesterday. Her purse, its emptiness punctuated by handkerchief and hairbrush, and the cigarettes and matches a stranger gave him last night. They are husband and wife, or lovers. Their childhood sweethearts become best friends against adversity, or supplicants praying for tomorrow. The road behind them curls like a river taking the easy way, not really caring where it goes as long as it's someplace else. Senryu, uh, Senryu, however it's pronounced by the majority, is uh, basically a, a haiku, the difference being that haikus deal with nature and the other deals with people. Uh, and this because you can do things like this for a 30 poem and 30 day exercise, is an annotated three line poem. Your hair in firelight. He feels her heart beating, the pulse of her breathing flowing across his chest. Seizes at my wanting heart. Her body settles into sleep like a child into dreams as he holds her in his arms. As if eyes and throat he loves to look at her, love her. Midnight thunder grumbles as it stalks away unwanted. Hmm? 
17 June 2015 and others. Charlotte, South Carolina. Gunshots don't ring out. Freedom rings. Coronets. The voices of Sabbath choirs, table graces, children at play. These, I will agree, ring out. Gunshots explode. Thunder. Sunder flesh from blood. Echo down the halls of ages as they remind us of loss and every firecracker overheard. Gunshots salute. They pay semi-holy tribute to our victory over them. To more of them dying than us. Whether the war is institutional or against our individual targets. Pardon? Thank you. Barren medicine woman. She talks with her husband, a sign of a strong marriage. Their conversations cover hours, continents, millennia past and yet to happen. He's been dead 10 years now. The young couple on the South Farm thinks she's a sad and lonely case. The old widow to the North understands and is both jealous and sad. And her kids, they think it's all quite right, and her friends are so happy for her for the happiness that he still brings. Color of your voice. Sunday afternoon in bed, your Sacagawea teaches my Clark how to explore unknown lands. Speaking not in whispers, but softly, you tell me of your childhood, the games you played in the fields, the gods you worshipped each day. I hear the pinks and purples of sunrise at a new riverbank. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Since you a whole bunch of new poems to read tonight for the first time. I don't have an order yet.